Hey there, so we're going to make a 2D side-scrolling game. Now the way that you can do this is you can have two different types of side-scrolling games. You can have the ones where the background actually moves with you, and you can have the ones where you move to the edge and then it switches the background around, sort of like Pitfall. We're going to do that second one, so just go ahead and create a new game. You can call it a Platformer. We'll make sure that we do Swift, Sprite Kit, and we'll do iPad only this time. You'll create it. And we'll make sure that it only works for, let's say, landscape left. You only want it to work for a left and right. You want it to be in landscape. So you'll go to the Game View Controller. Now, if you haven't watched the previous Sprite Kit tutorials, I would go and do that first so that you can get a handle on what's going on here, because I'm not going to explain that for this one. Go ahead and delete the extension. We'll delete this scene initialization through the SKS file, because we're not going to use that. And we'll just unindent this stuff. We'll create a variable up here, which is going, we're going to use the new private variables. We use private var scene, which is going to be of the type game scene, which is that new game scene that's created over here, which you can see they already created for you. In the view did load before anything else, after the initialization of the super view did load, we'll just call scene is equal to a new game scene. And we're going to use the size initializer, and we'll do view.bounds.size. So we're all set to go here. We'll switch over to our game scene and actually start making the game. So we switched over to our game scene. Now, I have some assets that I want to import. I have a bunch of .atlas folders here. I have one for the running of the man. So one of them is the guy standing still and I just made these myself they're absolutely horrible and I have a at 2x for each one so the at 2x is like 140 by 280 without the 2x is half the size 70 by 140 and the same goes with all these so we're gonna import all of these I also have this one called holes so that we can switch around the different types of ground layers so we have one this is like pitfall you'll have um, three holes on the ground you'll have um, a giant one on the ground, you'll have a lake on the ground, and then you'll have your background. I made two different types of background just so it switches out. You have the one with a lot of branches or a lot of trunks, and then you have the ones with the trunks in different places so that it actually seems like you're moving, and we have all these in at 2x versions. So we're going to take all these, we're going to go into our platformer, we're going to make a new group, and we'll make that group uh, resources. And in the resources folder, we're going to make a new group called images. And in the images folder, we'll drag all of these in. And these will be available to you. Make sure that you copy items as needed. And everything should look just like this. So now you have the three assets available to you. Now by doing that, you'll be able to loop through the run atlas and make the guy run when he needs to run and so on and so forth. So we have our view did move here. We're going to delete everything in the view did move. And we have our touch began, which is when they touch the screen. We're going to delete everything in there as well. Brought up here, I brought up pitfall. And you can see that when the guy moves, the background doesn't move. But when he reaches the edge, what happens is he's quickly switched to the left side. So it looks like, so it looks like he's actually going to the next stage or the next uh, screen but actually what's happening is it's switching out the background it's changing some ground elements and all that stuff so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna make that scene we have to create some variables that we want to store so we're gonna have one called var current level and that's gonna be equal to zero so we're gonna start on the zero with screen let's say and we need to create our level map and I'm going to do that by creating what's called a multi-dimensional array and a multi-dimensional array is just basically an array within an array and we're going to use different dictionaries and uh, to create this so what you're going to want to do is go to the platformer and you're going to create a new file which is going to be a new Swift file and we're going to call this levels.swift and you can make as many screens as you want we're just going to create uh, maybe four screens and they're all going to have different stuff in them. So we don't need to import foundation because we're just basically creating a class here called level. We'll put in there the data for those levels and that's going to be an array. Now notice I'm putting the array on 
multiple lines here. So the end of the ray will end there. In that first one, this will be the first level. So we'll make one level, we'll make two levels, we'll make three levels, and we'll make a fourth level. When I say level, I mean the different screens that you go to. And you'll see what this is in a second. For the first level, we're going to create a dictionary. This um, dictionary is going to have a background key. That background, we're going to use background one. So that's going to refer to our background atlas, background one. The at 2x will happen automatically based on whatever device we're using. Then we'll create maybe something like, you can add as many things to this as you want, but we're just going to create something called a uh, level type. So we'll call it just type. We have a bunch of different different ground things here. We have the one that's just a single hole in the ground. And we have one that's three holes in the ground. And this is an image that extends the entire width of the screen, but most of it's transparent. That way we don't have to position it. We just put it on the screen and say center it, and it'll automatically be in the right place. So the type of the first level will do single hole and that will reference this picture right here, this image for the single hole. We can add as many different details to this as we want. For right now, that's all we're gonna add. So we'll have a background that's, uh, for the second one, we'll do background two, and the type for the second one, we will do, let's see, how about multi-hole? So that's gonna refer to this multi-hole image. For the third screen, we'll do background one and the type. Let's do the um, one that's called deep hole. And that's the one that's not a lake, but it's giant hole in the ground. So that's this one. And for the last one, we'll do background is two. And the type will do the one that's a lake. So that's water hole. We don't have to do .png, we don't have to do any of that stuff. The first thing we'll want to do is in our view did move, which is the initialization method, we'll call something called load level. And this is going to be a function called load level. We'll want to load the background, which we didn't create yet. So we'll create function load background. So in load background, we'll create our initial background will will reference the current level what we can do we can say var current level data and this will reference the dictionary and because our dictionaries have different types in them they're not just all numbers and stuff like that we can use the ns dictionary and we'll say var levels and that's going to reference our levels and we can keep track of the current background so we'll do that as an sk sprite node and we're going to need to keep track of the man that's running so we'll make an SK sprite node for him. We'll also want to keep track of the current level type and that'll be an SK sprite node as well. So what we're going to need to do is create initialization function and because we want to initialize the size from our game view controller we need to create a size initializer and the way that you do this is at the very bottom of this function after you've done everything else is you call super dot init size and you pass in the size that we got and by doing this you'll be initialized creating initializer with a size which is already built into the super initializer so we don't have to do anything else but because we were in our game view controller and we wanted to initialize this by size here we have to make an initializer for the size in the game scene as well so in here we can say self dot current level is equal to zero so the first screen that we're on is going to be zero it's going to reference that levels array and dictionaries we'll say the current level data is going to be equal to an empty dictionary, a brand new dictionary. We'll say self.levels is going to be equal to a new levels class, which is that one that we just created, create a new one of those classes. We can initialize our background. We can say self.background is equal to a new SK sprite node. And we're not going to give it the image yet. We'll do that in our load level. We'll do self.man is going to be equal to a new SK sprite node. We can initialize our man with an initial initial texture. So what we'll do is we'll say that we need to load the texture. The texture is going to be new, equal to a new SK texture. And we're going to load an image called run underscore zero. And that references our atlas over here for the run atlas. 
and the run zero is just him standing still. When you get into run one, then he starts moving, and then run two is the next frame of the move, and then run three is the final frame of the running, and then it'll loop back to frame one, not frame zero, because frame zero is the standing still frame. We'll give the man a name so that we can reference it later. We'll say self.man.name is equal to man, and we'll say self.level type is going to be equal to an OSK sprite node, we will initialize our scene. So now that we're loading our level, we have our background that we're going to create. We're going to create the background number. Is it going to be one or two? Is it going to be this one? Or is it going to be this one? The way that we'll get that, we'll use the current level data and we'll grab the background out of that, the BG. We're going to force that out because we know that there's going to be something in there and we'll grab it as a string. We didn't load our initial level data yet, so we need to do that before we even load our level. Current level data is going to be equal to levels, that's our level class, dot data, and we're going to grab the current level, which is zero. So we're basically going to grab the first level data, the first screen data. So our background number should be one, because if we go back to our levels class, the first one is one. Then we just need to say that the background is equal to a new SK sprite node. And the image name that we're going to do is going to be BG underscore. We got to put this in quotes. And we're going to use the BG number that we just grabbed. And we'll just mark our background with a name. It'll be background. And we'll say background dot Z position. And we need to set the Z position because there's currently a bug in Sprite Kit which doesn't allow you to position things properly. So we're going to set the position manually. So this is going to be the lowest layer of things. It's going to be the background. Then we'll put the ground on top of that and then we'll put the man on top of that so that the man is standing on the ground which is standing on the background. So then we need to just say child, and we will add the background to the scene. One other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our entire scene has the right anchor point. So we want to set the anchor point to be the middle of the screen and currently it's not going to be that. So we'll go back to our game view controller and right under the aspect fill we'll do scene dot anchor point and we just need to set that to a new CG point. And the point's going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So by doing that when we put our image on the screen then it'll sit in the middle because it'll be at zero, zero, and zero, zero is going to be in the middle of the screen. So this should actually work. Let's see if we have any errors. We do. It's saying that we can't fit that texture for the background into the atlas. So we can't actually use this background as an atlas. So let's take this background atlas out. We'll move it to the trash and we'll create it as an image asset. So that's probably a better way to do this. So we'll say new image set and we'll grab our background one and put it into the one X and we'll grab our background one at two X, put it to the two X. We'll make a new background and we'll call this BG underscore two. We need to call this one BG underscore one and we'll grab our background 2x, put it in the 2x, background 2, and put it in the 1x. So now we should be good to go. So now back in our class, when we reference the BG, it's still going to work just the same. So let's run this. Okay, cool. So now we have our background on the screen, and everything looks great. So now we can add our ground type onto the screen. That would be a good next step. We can take our current level data and move that into our load level. That'd probably be a better place for it because it's actually part of loading the level. After loading our background, we'll make load level type. We'll create that function, load load level type. We'll create that info that we need to grab from the levels array. So we'll do var level type info. It's going to be equal to the current level data and from that we'll grab the type of the level we need to force that out and we'll grab it as a string so now we can say level type is equal to a new sk sprite node 
we'll load the image name as the level type info. We'll give the level type a name, which will be equal to uh, level type. And we'll set the position of the level type, just the Y, because it's as wide as the screen, so it's going to be perfectly on the X. But for the Y, we need to set it just a little bit farther down, so we'll just set it to negative 140. And we never have to change that because all of the level images are the same height. So then we just have to set the Z position. So if the background's at position 1, right here, we'll set the level type to be position 2. Z position equals 2.0. And then we'll just say scene dot add child, and that child's going to be the level type. So now we can run this. And now we have our first ground on the ground, this, this hole right here. So then when we move to the next screen, it should switch it out to the multi-hole, and then the lake, and then the deep hole in the ground, and all that stuff. So now we have that. Now we can add our man to the screen. So we'll make another function called load man. And we'll actually have a nice run animation for him. So we need to create a function called load man. Not going to return anything. We need to load all of the textures into that into something that we can use later. So we'll say load man textures. which is not a function we created yet, so let's create it, load man textures. And we'll just grab that running atlas, so we have running atlas, and we'll just grab all of the images from that by grabbing the atlas itself, so we can say X, SK texture atlas. So this is gonna refer to this entire folder of run images, and we'll just grab the one that's named run, so that'll grab this folder because it's run.atlas. We'll grab all the images out, but we don't want the zeroth one. So we're just going to do this manually for now because we don't want the zeroth one because that's the standing one. We only want the run animation to be one, two, and three. So we'll say for i in one to three, including three. So we'll loop through one through three. We'll grab the texture name. That's going to be equal to run i. And that should be an underscore. So that'll grab the first one, the second one, and the third one. We'll grab the image, and then we'll just append it to our list of images. So we'll say running atlas dot texture named, and we'll load the texture name that we just got above. Now we need to create an array of running man textures. So we'll go up here and we'll say var running man textures. And that's just going to be an array of SK textures. And then in our load man textures, we can say running man textures dot append, and we'll append this temporary texture that we just created. So now we have an array of all of the textures, just the run loop. So now in our load man thing, we, we've loaded the textures. And now we're going to just set the position of the man. So we'll say man.position.y is going to be equal. Well, we'll set it minus equal to man.size.height divided by 2. And then we'll say man.position.x is going to be equal to, let's say, negative the scene dot size dot width divided by two. So because the middle of the scene is zero, we want it to be all the way on the left. So all the way on the left is going to be negative whatever half the width of the scene is. So like maybe negative, um, if it's 1024, 1024 divided by two is 512. So it'll be around negative 512. But we don't want them to be completely all the way over there. So we'll just add a little bit of buffer. So we'll say man.size.width uh, times 2. So twice his width back onto the screen. But because the middle of the screen is where 0 is, because we set that in our game view controller by setting the anchor point of the scene, then that's what's happening. 
and then we'll just set the z position of the man which is going to set him to be on top of the ground so we'll say that that's equal to 3.0 so 1.0 is going to be the background then on top of that is going to be the ground level and then on top of that is going to be the man so then all we have to say is add child man so now we have all of this stuff so now we should actually have our man on the screen so let's run this and see what happens so now we have our man on the screen and he's just in that right position to fall down that hole maybe he should be a little farther down and he'll fall down the hole better um, what we need to do is we need to make the man move when you touch the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen. So when you touch anywhere on the left side, he'll move to the left. Anywhere on the right side, he'll move to the uh, right. And then we'll add his run animation so that he runs when you actually do that. We want to make sure that we update on every frame. So we'll go down to our update function. And in our update function, we'll just call another function because maybe we're going to do a lot of stuff in our game. So we want to keep track of all this stuff. So we don't want to do it all in the update function. We'll call update man position. And this is currently going to be the only function we have in here, but, you know, it could get complicated once you update, you know, where the tigers are and where the logs are and where the vine is. So you want to have this stuff, you know, fairly organized. So we'll do update man position. So for update man position, we just want to make sure that that man is moving in the right direction and that he is also moving according to where we currently touched on the screen. So we'll update the man position according to where we touched on the screen. So let's go back to our touch function. So in touches began, we don't really need the for loop. So we'll just grab all the touches and make sure that there's only one touch happening. If there's two, we'll make him jump. So we can say if event, and that'll contain the touch event. Um, we can say all touches dot count is equal to one. So if there's currently one finger on the screen, then we can grab the location in a constant. So we'll say let location touches dot any object dot location in node. And the node that we want to get the location in is the self, is this this scene itself. Then we can say if the location dot x is greater than zero, now remember if zero is in the middle of the screen, so we know that if the location is greater than zero, then they're touching the right side of the screen. If the location is less than zero, we know they're touching the left side of the screen. So we can create a function called move man, and we'll say move man to the right. Now I was using enums for this, but it was crashing the compiler a lot, so I just started using strings until they fixed that. So then we can do move man to the left. Now if there's more than one touch happening, then we can say else we will do a print line and we'll make the guy jump. So you can implement that yourself, but just know that two fingers on the screen is going to make him jump. So we need to make our function that moves the man. So we're going to call function move man and we can grab the direction that he's moving. So into this function we'll pass a direction. We'll say direction is a string. We'll get the direction. We'll say if the direction is equal to left, then we'll do this. Otherwise, it must be equal to right, so we'll do that. So we can say that the man is currently moving left. Now, we don't want to move the man when they touch the screen, you know, from that function directly. We want to move the man from the update function because that happens on every frame. If we move it from here, then he's only going to move once because it's only getting triggered once. We want something that's getting triggered 60 times a second. So that's why we'll just set a boolean that says, yes, the man is moving left. So true. And then for the else, we'll say the man is moving right. Now you could make a man left just true and false, and that would be the left and right. I just did this for fun. So then we'll say man.x scale, and this will flip the man around. It's going to be equal to negative 1. Basically, is the man going to be facing the left or facing the right? If you set this to 1 or negative 1, he'll change his direction. Then you can also say here, man right is equal to false. And here we'll say man left is equal to false. So we'll set the man going in a certain direction. And then we'll just say run the man. So we'll run our man loop to make him look like he's running. 
So we have to create a function called run man. And we have to create our man left and man right variables. So we'll say var man left is equal to false because he's not left currently. He's actually going to start off right, but it doesn't matter because he's not moving anywhere. So he's not moving left or right. So that should get rid of all those errors. So now we can update our run man thing, which will actually start running the run loop. So what we can do is we can say man dot run action. So instead of trying to do this by a second or every second or whatever and flip the things, SpriteKit has this already built in and we can just say make a new SK action and we're going to repeat this action forever. Basically, we're going to run the man until they let go of the left hand side. So we'll say SK action dot animate with textures. And now we get to use our list of textures that we put together, which maybe it was the running running man textures, sorry. And the time per frame, we're going to do 0 0.2. So this will switch every 0 0.2. And we'll say resize is false. And we'll say restore is true. So that should be good to go. So now if they press the left side, it's going to make him run. We need to really do one more thing, and that's just after the touch began, we also are going to need a touch is ended so that when they let go, we can stop him from running. So just type touch is ended. It'll do all the overriding for you, and you can just say cancel the moves. And that's not a function. We need to create that. So we'll say function cancel moves. So our cancel moves function will just say man left is equal to false man right is equal to false and man dot remove all actions and that's going to take that action that we just set the run action and it's going to cancel it so the man left and the man right booleans don't really do anything yet because we're not really using them we're just setting them so what we need to do this to use them is we look at our um, update function which is going to call update man position we need to update the man's position based on whether we have set the left or the right. So we can say if man.position.x is less than the stage max left. We also have to say if the man.position.x is greater than stage, dot, or stage max right. So we actually have to create those variables. So we'll just create them up here by saying var stage max left is going to be a CG float. It's going to be equal to zero. We'll make stage max right, which is also going to be equal to zero. Now we need to actually initialize these. So when the scene starts up and the scene has kind of been measured already, we can say stage dot max left is going to be equal to um, negative stage max right, right? Because zero is in the middle so all the way to the left is the opposite of all the way to the right because zero is in the middle so we can set our stage max right to be self dot stage sorry self dot size dot width divided by two so now we have our left and our right we have the farthest left and the farthest right so the width of the stage divided by two means the halfway point of the stage, but because stage is me measured from the middle all the way to the right will only be half the amount of the stage in points because zero is in the middle. Halfway all the way to the left will be negative half the width of the stage. That's why we say self.size.width divided by two. Size is going to contain a structure that has width and height. So now we can go back to our update man function where we update the position of the man so we can say if he's less than the stage left then we need to move him to the next screen if he's greater than the stage right then we need to move him to the next screen but the opposite side of the opposite screen so we're not going to do any of those right now we'll just say um, if man left so if the man is currently moving left, then we'll say man.position.x is minus equal the man speed, which we didn't create yet. 
and we'll say if we could say else if and then if we're going to do that we'll put it on the same line so else if man right then we'll do plus equals the man speed and for the man speed that's just going to be uh, a straight up number so we'll go to the top and we'll just you know you can play around with this number you can say var man speed and we'll just set it to 10 because that seemed to be a good number to use so now the guy should actually move to the left and right and he should run his animation for running so let's try this out and see what happens let's see if we crash so when we click to the right he runs to the right when we click to the left he runs to the left so it's actually running our animation and you can see that when we stop he stands still it goes back to that frame zero now the only problem is is that he will continue to run off the stage so we need to make it so that he then goes to the next scene so that's going to be our next step so for that we already are testing if he's all the way to the left or all the way to the right so if he goes off the left if he's less than the left because the left side is a negative number because zero is in the middle once again we can say um, if next screen and next screen is going to tell us whether or not we have a next screen to go to because we may be out of items in our level map that we so we don't have any more stuff to go to but if we can then we'll move to the next screen so we'll say move to the next screen by going to the current not the current level data but the current level plus one if it's all the way to the right so if it's to the left we'll do minus one so if we can do that then we will and if that is true then we'll say man dot position dot x is equal to stage max right so if the guy goes all the way off the left side of the screen and there is a new stage to go to then we will go and move him to that stage and then we'll move his body all the way to the right side of the stage so it's as if he came to that stage and he moved all the way, all the way to the right if the man is um, currently moving left then we'll just return because we've already moved him to the right position that we want him to be so we're not gonna try and get down to the second part where we're actually repositioning him so then we'll do the same thing with if man position so if he's all the way off the right side of the screen we want to say if we can move him to the next screen and we haven't written that function yet um, and the next screen would be the current level that he's on plus one we're not going to set the current level we're just going to check we'll say man dot position dot x is equal to the stage max left so we'll move him all the way to the left side of the screen as if he just came on to that new screen and then we'll switch the screen in that function next screen and we'll say if the man is currently moving right then we'll just return because we don't want to continue that whole movement to the right so we need to just write this function next screen and that's going to take a level parameter which is going to be an integer so what's the level that you want to move him to and can we move him to that level so we'll say if the level is greater than or equal to zero because we know that the the lowest level is going to be zero and the level is less than the levels dot data dot count so the maximum amount of levels we put in there that way we can keep adding levels and nothing will break we'll say that the current level is equal to the level that they sent in so we'll set the current level we'll say that the current level data now the data for the new level is going to be equal to uh, levels dot data and the data will be the data of the current level so we'll grab the array at the index of the current level and we're gonna run something called clean screen let's create that function real quick it's a very simple function I just like to put things into functions and all we're gonna do for that is we're gonna say background remove from parent and we'll also say level type dot remove from parent because we're gonna remove the background and switch it out for a different background we're gonna remove the level type and switch it out for a different level type 
And then all we have to do is call load level type. And we can also call load background. And it doesn't matter what order we load these in because we set that Z position. So we'll load the background and we'll load the level type again, just like we did when we initially came in. We'll just say that we were successful in going to the next screen, so we'll return true. And otherwise, we'll just return false because we made it to this part. We didn't return true, so it must not really be possible. It's complaining because we didn't set a return type for this. We'll set the return type to be a bool. So now, if he can move to the next screen, he will. If he can't, then we won't let him move to the next screen. So let's run this now, and we'll move the guy, he'll run, and when he gets to the edge of the screen, you can see the background changes that. It looks like he's actually running to the next screen, but what's actually happening is he's moving all the way from the left to the right. Now we'll run back to our first screen, which should only have one hole on it. It does. Second screen has three holes. You can see the background changes. There's our big hole. He's not falling down it. And then here's our last one. Now. We can't, we shouldn't be able to move past this. So you can see he can keep running, but he won't hit that. So we'll go back and we should get to the big hole. So it's checking the array for the data and it's reloading the screen. There's our three holes and here's our one hole. And we can't run past this either. So this works beautifully. Now you can really do anything you want. Notice that he, because he's going left and right, there's nothing stopping you from making him going up and down and making you know, something that's a map that does that sort of thing. You can add enemies to this, you can make them fall down these holes, whatever. This is sort of in the style of Pitfall, it's just the rest of that functionality isn't implemented yet, but I'm sure you could figure that out. And you can make a much better run loop than I can. Right now it looks like he's kind of riding a scooter or something, but the animation is happening with that run action. So this is pretty cool, and it works really well. And if we were to, let me see if I remember how to do the, we could make him jump. Ah, there we go. So you could see down here that he's going to jump. We didn't make him jump, but we made that available to us. So if you hold option, you can do a two click, but obviously it's best to run this on an actual device. So that's how to make one of these types of platform games where you're actually moving from room to room. And you can really expand on this, and I want to see what you create. I'll see you next time.